Hello class. In the last couple of videos, we were talking about the reactions with ketones and aldehydes. Now we're going to shift our focus on carboxylic acids and carboxylic acid derivatives. Okay. Let's see, derivatives. DER, we'll just abbreviate that, okay? So we're going to take a look at carboxylic acids and carboxylic acid derivatives. Now, what is a carboxylic acid? It has a general formula like this. And one of the a very common carboxylic acid right here is this guy right here. This is acetic acid. That is the molecule responsible for the smell in vinegar. So it's kind of the same thing. Vinegar is acetic acid type thing. Now that is a carboxylic acid. But what is a carboxylic acid derivative? The carboxylic acid derivative is simply <coughs> when you change that group. So for example, if we had replaced it with a chlorine, that would be a acid chloride. If we changed it to something like H2, that would be an amide. What some other carboxylic acid derivatives there's a acid anhydride. Let's see, what other ones are there? Oh, we have esters. We have an ester. Let's see, how many more do we need here? I think that's it. So those are the common uh, carboxylic acid derivatives right here, the acid chloride, the amide, the acid anhydride, and the ester. You can see with these derivatives, we're just replacing this group right here. Now in nature, carboxylic acids are very prevalent. And also in the pharmaceutical industry. Does anyone know the name of this molecule right here. I'm pretty sure most everyone has uh, taken this drug in their lifetime. So that molecule right there is acetyl salicylic acid or short version aspirin. That's what aspirin looks like. And uh, in undergraduate organic labs, you typically make acetyl salicylic acid in, in the labs. And it's quite fun, quite fun experiment to do. So like the previous chapter, we're going to learn about carboxylic acids and their derivatives. We're going to learn how to name them. We're going to learn how to make them. And then we're going to also look at how they react with certain reagents to so give us different products. Let's start looking at nomenclature. So if I had a molecule like that, I see that there's four carbons. So we would what call that a butane, right? But if I have a carboxylic acid with four carbons, so we still have one, two, three, four carbons, we, so the parent chain or the longest carbon chain is a butane, but now we have a different functional group here. So this ending here has to change to reflect 
that it is no longer a alkane, but a carboxylic acid. And so what we do is we take this E, get rid of it, and replace it with oink. Butane oink acid. So we added that piece right there. So we pronounce that molecule as butanoic acid. So if we look at a more complicated one, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then we have some substituents here. We need to find the longest carbon chain so we can find the parent name. So I see one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So in this one, it looks like it's five carbon chains long. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to number it starting with the carboxylic acid. Because what we're going to do in class is I'm going to show you a table. Because we have an alcohol here and we have a carboxylic acid. And so do we have the suffix at the end of the name? Do we have oik for the carboxylic acid? Or do we have the all because we have an alcohol? And we have a table that shows priorities. And a carboxylic acid trumps an alcohol. So the, the suffix in the name is going to be oik, not all for the alcohol. And because the carboxylic acid takes precedence over the alcohol, we start numbering with that carbon, the carbonyl carbon. And then two three, four, five. And we want we number it in this way because we want to have the longest carbon chain that connects all the functional groups. So we have the carboxylic acid and we have the alcohol. And so we want that parent chain to number all those functional groups. So what's the process here? Well, we have to find the parent name, right? How many carbons do we have? Well, I'm seeing five in the longest parent chain. So we have pentane. There's a parent chain. And now we have to number the find the substituents. Well, we have two methyls at carbon four, and we have a alcohol at carbon five. When the alcohol is considered the a substituent, we call it a hydroxy. We don't call it an alcohol. So that is a hydroxy group. And we need to, because the carboxylic acid takes precedence, we have to replace the E with the oik and then add the word acid. And now we put it all together. And we have to organize these substituents in alphabetical order. So H comes before M, because that prefix di doesn't play a part in the alphabetics. So how do we do this? We go 5 hydroxy dash 4 dash dimethyl. I'm missing one number. For four dimethyl. And then we put the parent name. Pentanoic acid. That's a mouthful.
So it looks like a relatively simple molecule, but the name is 5 hydroxy 4 4 dimethyl pentanoic acid. Now, when you have a carboxylic acid on a ring, not inside a ring, because that would be impossible, but on the outside of a ring. Now, I want you to think for a moment, why would it be impossible to have a carboxylic acid in the ring? Think about that for a moment. Okay, so when we have a carboxylic acid on a ring, we have the parent name as, instead of oic acid, we say carboxylic. There. So when the carboxylic acid is on a ring, we parent name carboxylic acid. And then this right here, is going to be what? Cyclohexane. So that molecule would be called cyclohexane carboxylic acid. Now, like all the previous chapters, organic chemistry has been around way before the IUPAC nomenclature. So there's going to be molecules that have common names that we just have to uh, put to memory. And so some of those molecules look like this. We have this guy that has a common name of formic acid. We have one that we've already seen before, that's acetic acid, which is the found in vinegar. We have one with three carbons, and that guy's called propionic acid. We have a benzene derivative here, which we've seen before. That would be benzoic acid. Okay. And we also have another one with four carbons. One, two, three, four. And that one is butric acid. And I did not spell that right. Put a Y right there. Okay, butric acid. So there's, those are some common carboxylic acids with their common names. Now another rule to be aware of is that with the previous examples that I, I showed you two molecules on how to name the uh, carboxylic acid, we, we talked about butanoic, butanoic acid and the 5-hydroxy-4,4-dimethyl pentoic acid. Remember those two? That's how you name carboxylic acids when there's only one carboxylic acid. But if you have a molecule with two carboxylic acids in it, there's different rules for naming those. So that's what I'm going to show you next, is how to name a molecule with two carboxylic acids. Okay, now looking at what's on the board, I want you to focus your attention on just this molecule. Don't worry about anything else. So how would we name this guy? Well, we number the longest carbon chain, right? And so we see that there's uh, five carbons. So we're thinking pentane, right? 
But then what we've learned with carboxylic acids, you replace the E with the oic, right? But that only happens if there's one carboxylic acid. Here we have two. So what you have to do is change it, pentane, and here's the kicker. This is crazy. Look, you keep the E. Pentane, di, oic acid. See how we're keeping the E when there's two of them. Subtle, subtle differences. So you could very well see on an exam, if I asked you to name this molecule, you would have this one right here as the correct answer choice. But look how subtle it can be. That's an O. Like acid. So this guy right there, do you see the subtle difference? I omitted the E because that's what we're so used to doing when there's only one carboxylic acid. But you don't do that with two. That's the take home message. Okay. What this one right here is the correct answer because we keep the E because there's two carboxylic acids. Now, there's four that I've drawn right here of carboxylic acid or dicarboxylic acids that have common names. We have oxalic acid, malonic acid, succinic acid, and glutaric acid. Common names, something that you just have to remember. And what's cool about these four molecules is they are part in the, uh, I'm blanking on the word, it's not respiratory system. It's, why am I blanking on it? Let me think about that for a second. Okay, so these molecules are part of the metabolic pathway when you take glucose, when you eat glucose and you break it down into ATP. These are the uh, intermediates of that process. So you'll see these right here in the glycolysis pathway. So you're going to really, really study this in biochemistry, but we are introducing it here in organic. So here are the common names, and this is what you're going to see in your uh, or, uh, biochemistry course. Okay. Next, we are going to delve into the structure, the structural features of carboxylic acids. When we take a look at a carboxylic acid, what is the hybridization state of that carbon and that oxygen? Recall that both of them are sp2 hybridized. So because they're sp2 hybridized, that means they're completely flat. And because they're completely flat, and there's three groups coming off of this carbon, there's one, two, three, <coughs> what's the geometry of that? Or the, what is the geometry of the carboxylic acid? Trigonal planar. So it's trigonal planar, which means you can see it's written in the plane, so it's completely flat. Another characteristics of carboxylic acids is when you compare it to an alcohol. What do we have going on with alcohols? What's a, a common feature here? Well, we know that 
alcohols can hydrogen bond. So if we have another alcohol here hanging out, like that, what can happen? Well, we can have hydrogen bonding, right? And that increases the boiling point of alcohols. And that's why water has such a high boiling point because of the hydrogen bonding network. But when you contrast an alcohol to a carboxylic acid, What does the carboxylic acid have that the alcohols do not? What if I let's see, double bond of that carbon R. Now I'm going to erase this hydrogen right here because it's in my way. O like that, hydrogen like that. Look how, now when you have a carboxylic acid, it can hydrogen bond with another carboxylic acid like this. Do you see now what carboxylic acids have that alcohols do not? They can have two of these hydrogen bonds. And because there's more of them, Carboxylic acids have a higher boiling point than alcohols. Isn't that so cool? Another thing that we need to remember, you may have covered this in Oracle 1, but remember a, a term called carboxylates or carboxylate salts. So what happens if you take a carboxylic acid and add some base to it? So let's say we have a generic carboxylic acid here. And let's say you add some sodium hydroxide. What's going to happen mechanistically? Well, sodium hydroxide breaks apart. It's ionic, right? And so what's going to happen is you're going to do a proton transfer reaction here. And you're going to get a negative charge there. Then you're going to then still have the sodium ion hanging around. And then this hydroxide grabbing a proton has just made water. Now, when you evaporate all of the water, what's going to be left behind? What's going to be left behind is the carboxylate and then sodium. And so we've just generated a carboxylate salt. That's not an H. A carboxylate salt. So, thing to remember, carboxylic acids in the presence of base, you're going to make the carboxylate. And then if you evaporate off all the water, it turns into the carboxylate salt. Now, if I take this right here, now, I drew that in a different way than what you're probably used to seeing it. But this is a common name. This is benzoic acid. So if you treat that with base, you're going to what? You're going to make the carboxylate, right? Like that. Let's say we use sodium hydroxide again to form the carboxylate. And then you're going to 
evaporate off the water and you're going to make the carboxylate salt. Well, what is the name of that carboxylate salt? Well, we started with benzoic acid. We ripped off a proton. Now we have the carboxylate right there. And so when you go from the acid to the carboxylate, what you're going to have to do now, you're going to get rid of the IC and acid. You're going to take that and replace it okay, with O8. So if we want to color code this here, so we are taking off the ic acid and replacing it with the O8. And so this carboxylate salt is going to be called benzo uh, I miss Spoke here. We, we're going to keep the O, so we don't need that there. Let me look at it that way. Benzoate. And what type of benzoate? So what type of metal is attached? Or associated with the carboxylate? It is a sodium. So the full name of this carboxylate salt is going to be, you name the metal first, sodium, and then you replace the ic acid with an eight, sodium benzoate. There's the name. A lot of different rules that we're learning. Okay? So that's how you name carboxylate salts. Put the metal first, replace the IC acid with eight, and you're good to go. Let's see here, what's the next? You guys remember pKa values? and how to use those to determine the acidity or basicity of a molecule. So that's what we're going to look at next. When you take a generic carboxylic acid and place it in water, what's going to happen? We can have those lone pairs come and do this. and give us the carboxylate plus the hydronium ion. But at equilibrium, what side is favored? So let's fix this and go like, draw it like this. So now we have equili equilibrium arrows that's going to go right here. What side is favored? It looks like that. The reactants are favored. And the reason why that's the case is because carboxylic acids are considered weak acids. And it's a weak acid here because of one reason is because of its pKa value. Most carboxylic acids have a pKa around 5. That's just a general, a good number to have in your head. Another good number to have in your head, what is the pKa of an alcohol? It has a pKa of about 15 or 16. What's the pKa of a hydrogen attached to 
an alkane that has a pKa of about 50. So go back to your pKa tables from Orgo 1 and just refresh on the main functional groups, carboxylic acids, alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, amines, and now we're talking about carboxylic acids. Do you also recall when you were doing an acid base, uh, learning about acid base chemistry? So we have found our acid, and so this would be our base, and this would be our what? Our conjugate base, and this would be our conjugate acid. Remember doing stuff like that? Another way you can figure out this equilibrium, which side is going to be favored, is by comparing the pKa's of the acids. The pKa of the hydronium ion is negative 1.7. So when we look at those values, negative 1.7 and 5, based on the numbers, which one is the most acidic acid? The one with the negative number. So the hydronium ion is more acidic than the carboxyl carboxylic acid. And so there's a general rule that I teach my students. <clears throat> when you compare the two acids, the equilibrium arrow is going to favor or point towards the side where there's the weaker acid. And so because the carboxylic acid is weaker, equilibrium is going to favor it to the left. And that's how, how you know. Hmm. Now, if you compare the pKa of a carboxylic acid to, let's say, hydrochloric acid, that adds a pKa of like negative 8. Or another acid, sulfuric acid, that has what, a negative 3 approximately. So these guys, because they have negative values and they're very, very strong, or very, very acidic, these are considered strong acids. But look at the pKa of the carboxylic acid, it's 5. So it's considered weak. But when you compare a carboxylic acid, let, let's say, to a alcohol, that's a pKa of what? 16. So a carboxylic acid is more acidic than an alcohol, right? So why, let's shift our attention to um, comparing the carboxylic acid to the alcohol and understand why the alcohol isn't as acidic as the carboxylic acid. So what happens when you place a alcohol in water here? You place it in water, and so we are going to have a pKa of 16 here. And when that water comes in and rips off that proton, you get this species right here. All right, and then the pK of this is a negative 1.7. So at equilibrium, we're going to be favored towards this way. But when we contrast that with, let's say, a carboxylic acid, What do we have going on here?
So what's the PK of this guy? About five. So we're seeing the same trend here equilibrium wise, right? This is favored and this side is favored because equilibrium is going to point towards the weaker asset. But why is the carboxylic acid a pKa of five versus 16? Well, it has to all, it comes down to the stability of the conjugate base. So if I just get rid of these hydroniums here to make a point, you see how the oxygen atom is electronegative and it has a negative charge. So that's okay. That's stabilizing because it's negatively charged. It's okay having a negative charge. So does this oxygen. It is an oxygen, electronegative, has a negative charge. And it stabilizes that negative charge. But what does the carboxylic acid have that the alcohol doesn't? I might run out of board space, so I'm going to crunch this. What you see, the, the carboxylate right here has resonance. So it's resonance stabilized. So both the alkoxide and the carboxylate, they both have an electronegative atom with a negative charge, which is stabilizing. But the carboxylate has resonance, which stabilizes it more. And because this conjugate base is more stable, then this one, this guy is more prone to say, hey, take my proton. It's okay, because I am chill and okay with it, because I'm so stable over here. The alcohol says I, I'm okay, and it's okay to take off that proton. But if these two guys started talking to each other, the carboxylate is going to be way more stable and way more okay with its proton being taken. Well, that's the stabilizing effect of carboxylic acids. It has resonance. Okay, the next thing that we are going to have to talk about is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Do you remember that from general chemistry? Before we jump into looking at the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, let's just look at it. Um, let me just, let's just start doing that. So we have a carboxylic acid. And I want to understand what this is going to, this carboxylic acid is going to look like when you have it in, let's say, a physiological pH. So a physiological pH is 7.3. That's our pH. That's the pH that is inside our bodies. And our body works very, very hard to keep us at pH 7.3. If it goes up or below, then you get really, really sick. And it doesn't take a lot to uh, start feeling negative effects if your P physiological pH changes. So we are asking a very simple question. The pH is going to affect if the majority of the molecule looks like the carboxylic acid or the carboxylate. Which one? Or, well, it's not either or, it's at equilibrium, which one is favored at this particular pH? So what I, how I like to view it is I, I know the pH and I know my pKa. And what's the pKa of a carboxylic acid? It's about five. Okay. So 
So this is how I do it. When I look at the pH and the pKa, and I'm comparing these numbers, do you see how that is a 5? So it's acidic. And that number is 7.3. So that is, means it's more basic. So this number right here, 7.3, is more basic than that. So the pH, because it's more basic, it's going to rip off this proton. There's a lot of base that can rip off this proton because of the pH. So the pH says there's going to be a lot of the hydroxide floating around. And when that number is basic and larger than this one, it's going to favor equilibrium towards the carboxylate. So it's going to look something like that. Now let's contrast. Let's say if I have a alcohol and we are at physiological pH 7.3, what does equilibrium look like? Well, I go to the pKa's, 16, 7.3. Now do you see how this guy is more basic than that number? Because it's larger. So equilibrium is going to favor that way. Because what's happening here is there's not enough hydroxide ions in here to force it to the right because its pH is smaller than this pKa. So the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation comes into play to give us a number. How much, how much more favored is the alcohol versus the alkoxide? Or how much is the carboxylate favored over the carboxylic acid? So using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is going to give us a value to this. So if we take the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, and what we're going to do is do a little rearrangement So this is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, pH equals the pKa plus the log of the conjugate base, the concentration of the conjugate base, divided by the concentration of the acid. Okay, so that's the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. I'm not going to show you how I rearranged it, but I'm going to take this equation, use algebra, and I'm going to rewrite it to look like this. The conjugate base concentration divided by the concentration of the acid is going to equal 10 raised to the power of the pH minus the pKa. And this is going to give us a value to our problem here. Here's our carboxylic acid. And we already, let's see, our pH is 7.3, physiological pH. And what did I say? It's going to be favored to the carboxylate. But by how much? Let's put a number to it. So what we do is we use this equation right here. Right here, we use this part. Do we know the pH? Yes. 10 raised to the pH, which is 7.3, minus the pKa of the acid, which the pKa is 5. 
right? Now let's simplify that down. That would be roughly 10 to the what? 2.3. So that number, well, let's say, let's make our math easy just for this example, okay? What if the pKa of the carboxylic acid? Now, your textbook tells you that the pKa of carboxylic acids is in the range of 4 to 5, which is true. Let's use, for simple math, let's say the pKa is 4.3. So what does that tell us here? That equals 10 to the third, which equals what? 1,000. So what that's telling us is that the carboxylate is favored. Let's see here. Um, how do I want to do this? So what we have here is the conjugate base concentration divided by the acid concentration equals 1,000. So what that's telling us is that for every 1,000 conjugate base molecules, which is, this is the conjugate base, you're going to have one acid. This is our acid over here. That's what this number is telling us. It, because what is it? A thousand divided by one equals a thousand, right? So that is the ratio. We are favored to the right by a thousand times. The carboxylate is favored a thousand times over the carboxylic acid at that pH. Now you can do this all over again by changing the pH, and we can do it mathematically, and we can uh, do it just visually. Let's say, what if the pH was pH 2? Where would the equilibrium go now? So at a pH of 2, the way I look at it is, okay, that's more acidic than four. So there's going to be a whole lot more acid around because it's so acidic. And since there's so much acid around, it's going to protonate the carboxylate and it's going to favor equilibrium to the left. But by how much? So we just go to the Henderson Hasselbalch equation right here. So the pH 10 raised to the pH is 2 minus the pH of this, let's say 4. What do we have now? That is going to equal 10 raised to the negative 2. So what is 10 to the negative 2? Like, oh, 1, 2, like that. So what's that telling us? So that equals 0 0.01. So that's telling us that if we look at that ratio, we have the conjugate base concentration by the acid is going to equal 0 0.01. So that's telling us we have 0.01 molecules of the conjugate base to every one molecule of acid. 
Now I can change this to get rid of the decimals. I can times it by 100 to get this number right here to 1. If I multiply everything by 100, what do we get? It is now a 1 to 100 ratio. So what is that saying? For every one molecule of conjugate base, there's going to be 100 molecules of the acid. That's what that is saying. Isn't that cool? Henderson-Hasselbalch equation gives us a value of how much, how many molecules there are at equilibrium. Well, we are out of time, so that's where we will stop for today. Let me know if you guys need any help.